Today I've been invited down by Rockback who make articulated dump trucks. They're part of the Volvo group. This is where they're made in Motherwell in Scotland. So nice to be in home soil. I'm going to see them be made from a sheet of steel right the way through the production line into the dump truck at the end. So let's go check it out and see how it's made. So the material here will come in either as pre-cut sheet steel or we'll cut it ourselves and then we'll send it down into the fabrication area. But if we head down this way we'll have a look at the Arctic, the articulated and rockback bodies. This is our, our rockback body fabrication area. So the pre-cut the pre and bent material will come round into this area and this is where we start to fabricate the body, tack welding and into position before it will then move down and as we get to the bottom of the bay you'll see one of the big investments we've had in the last couple of years in one of our robot welding systems. The body will get the majority of the welding done in that area before coming back here for that finishing. The robot welders can't cover 100% of that so they still need their own experienced welding team to hand finish the units before it goes and moves into the next process which would be the shot blast and then the painting of that body before it moving into production. We have two of these robot welding systems in the factory. They've been installed in the last couple of years. What this really helps with, with regards to quality of weld, but it also helps with the efficiencies as well. It allows us to get more bodies fabricated, which allows us to produce and manufacture more, more rock bag dump trucks to get out into the customers the customer's hands and it helps with the overall energy consumption again which is all part of that wider sustainability from the factory. You'll see as we go through the factory we have investment in the robot welding systems but also when we go to the machine shop most of our CNC machinery has all been replaced as well and upgraded into the more modern machinery It's again you get efficiency benefits and you get the overall quality and benefits as well. You can see in the system here we've got two, two bodies lined up, one of them's actually getting welded down the other side here and we'll see as we walk, walk back down here. But you've got two robot welding arms in there so it can weld simultaneously. The majority of that body fabrication is now done by the robot welder. So as we passed at the, at the beginning of the bay, you had manual plating, tacking the material together into shape. It'll then come to the robot welder, that'll do the majority of the welding and then again it goes back to the positioners then for those tough to get areas that the robot can't quite get. One of the other key components with regards to the production of the, the articulated truck is that articulation pivot. So it's going to then this is the start of the process here in these three stages and we'll see some of the machining on the next the, the next bay. But this is it, this is where you're going to have that articulation and oscillation. So it's a key component in the fabrication of the, the rock back. This area here is the, is the machine shop. So again, these CNC machines that you see along here have all been put in and installed in the factory since Volvo took over the business. We had machines here. Again, they were becoming a bit dated. So again, it's part of that investment into basically quality manufacture to Volvo, we replaced a number of the CNC machines, which then allows us allows us to up capacity, but you're also using more modern, more efficient machines as well. Have you got any girls working in the factory? We do, not as many as we would like. Um, again, it's a focus within the, within the business as a whole is to kind of basically up that percentage on female employees. It's a big push within, yeah. the, within the overall group and within the kind of local businesses as you can appreciate uh, it is yeah. hard to attract Absolutely. into this type of Especially industry. Especially fabrication, it's like not very popular at all no. for girls to get into. Yeah, um, but even, even trying to bring in young men as Aye, well into the business as a whole, into it's, it. it's the industry as a whole and Aye. trying to make that more attractive and you take on quite a lot of apprentices as well do you we do so in the last number of years that's been a big part of the program um we've already had an intake coming in for this year i think we've, I'll, I'll get the numbers for you but it's about seven or eight we're that's taking good. on 
and we'll take them on in, you know, fabrication, machining, but we also bring them in as commercial apprentices for the offices, for the engineering graduate schemes, this type of thing as well. That's good. I started in here as an apprentice. Oh, did you? So I was a, an apprentice maintenance electrician. So you were working on cranes, weld sets, CNC machines, changing lights in offices, Everything. anything at all. Yeah. So it was a really good grounding really and you were you were working cross departments and Aye, that's really good. Yeah. Learned it all. I probably know the place inside out then. Yeah. <laughs> some of the so the pre, some of the machines are still here, like the press brake that we've got here, this is a thousand ton press that we'll use for shaping that cut cut steel, depending on what area the the fabrication it needs to go to next. You can see here that looks like the, the front plate. And this area just in front of us here is the rigid body area. So again, a similar process to what you would have seen with the rock back bodies. Sheet steel, bent into shape, plated up, and then into the robot welders for the majority of the welding before coming over into the manipulators for the for the finishing of the hand welding to get into the areas that we can't get to with the, with the robots. So this is the R100. So as much as, yeah, historically that's how they've been the TRX TR100, but back in 2018, this was launched as a new product. So if you were comparing that to a TR100, that's got a different chassis, it's got a different body arrangement and that side of things. It's a different engine that's in it, different control system, different cab. So no, that is basically a Volvo rigid product. As much as, yeah, legacy and historically that's, it came from that platform. So this area particularly is the rigid rear axles. So we basically design and manufacture the full rear axle for that Volvo rigid in-house. So you can see this is the final fit up. We've got the front wheels there. This is the differential area. That's the rear brake pack assembly area. And then as we further walk up the line, you've got cab sub assembly and you'll have engine and transmission sub assembly as well. And then that's going to feed over into the main the main assembly line. And this is us now moving into the rock black production thing. If you're looking down the assembly line here in the production process, on the left hand side we have our sub-assembly area. So you can see just beside us here, you know, we've got some tanks getting put together. You've then got exhaust cradles being with the exhaust components being put on there. And then as we move down you've got transmissions, engines, also just at the next stage as we'll see as we go down, there'll be the trailer sub-assembly and then these are then feeding over into our assembly lines at the different points that we've got here. So this assembly line here, you'll have both rockback models, the RA30 and the RA40, both go down this one, one assembly line here. So by the time it gets to the end of the line here, it will be complete. It will be complete, they will be able to basically lube it up, fuel it up, oil it up, start it, do all their checks with regards to pressures, that side of things. When it gets to the end of the line here, it is in essence complete and then it'll move to final inspection and if sometimes if there's any additional options that may need to be fitted that we've not done on the assembly line. Final checks there and then we're moving into final inspection. And that's that, you know, where we'll take it outside, we'll take it up to the test track. We've got roughly a four hour process they're going to go through there. Heat, getting the truck up to temperature, checking all working conditions, heating it up, cooling it down, and just making sure everything's the way it should be before it's coming back in to get the final sign off before it's available to ship out to the, the dealer network and the customers. <laughs>
show you kind of a quick walk around uh, the two products we have here. It's uh, 30 ton RE30 and uh, 40 ton RE40, both on similar platforms. So we're now into our third year of Rockback. First year was all about establishing the brand, getting our name out there, removing the legacy of our previous uh, uh, branding, etc. So since we've been purchased by Volvo in 2014, there have been massive investments in stabilising the original product, making it more reliable, durable, and we've tapped into to Volvo's uh, talent depth there. Aesthetically, it's not changed too much to date, but there have been a lot of work underneath the skin. Based on those four principles, you know, the efficiencies, the sustainability, innovation, and connected services, you know. <laughs> Some drifting going on there. <laughs> I drove one before, like not a rock back though. Um, uh -huh. Terex. Well, I done my apprenticeship down at NCC. Right, and okay. Bircher, when they had an old Terex at the time. Right. Just to, it's just fully automatic. Just put your foot over there, foot in the brake, select drive. Handbrake. Handbrake, twist off, and Perfect. I can show in. Oh. You'll feel that it's got a, a high upshift, but it's just because it's on the concrete. Now. We'll have a go. Do you trust me? I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> See, in the cab, it's not like the dumper I'm used to with no cab. It's uh, got everything in it. It's got radio, it's got heating, it's got adjustable air seat, can move the steering wheel. It's got your controls at how fast you're going, fuel, then that's your forward and back there. And then this is obviously your tipping. Very comfy. Can easily spend a nice comfortable day in here. So this was one of the first Terex's in 1973. Look at it, 17 ton compared to that now. Crazy. It's open. <laughs> no fancy cab here. <laughs> simple as simple gets. I got a lovely little goodie bag all frock back. Oh, another cap for dad. That one's actually pretty cool colours, I do like that myself. Hard hat. Oh, a nice t-shirt. Pen. What's this? Oh my goodness. A Bluetooth speaker. How cool is that? That just finishes off such an amazing time. Thank you so much to Rockback and everybody there. Honestly, had such a good time. It was what an experience seeing a factory like that so close to home still very old school but very professional um just a few robots in there but it's mental seeing it coming in as a sheet of steel going through the production line and coming out as a dump truck on the other side to even testing them here as well and fixing anything that's going wrong it's mental so yeah thank you very much to rock back um for having me down here appreciate everything and hopefully get out on site one day with one of these big trucks I hope you enjoyed this video and again if it's something you like to see let me know in the comments um because i love this it's all new to me as much as it is for you guys getting to see inside of these factories and stuff especially one in scotland as always thank you so much for the comments likes and subscriptions come back next week and see what i'm up to